What was the response when you began to share the news with people close to you? You know, we started off with close family. One yeah. of my sisters <laughs> lives, lives in Dorchester, and she was at the hospital within 30 minutes of hearing. And the whole time we were initially there, she was our note keeper and our rational person in the room. And, you know, she, she would make sure we asked the right questions, or if we didn't ask, she took notes. She was awesome. Um, by the time we got home, friends had set up a meal train for us. Yeah. Uh, another friend came over and demanded that we start a GoFundMe, and she started that. Um, and friends, it started off, you know, close family, then friends got involved. Um, and then it really, the whole support for Declan really caught fire. A friend of ours approached our Boston store manager, uh, Steve Brantman, and he said, hey, can I share this story? And Mark Vitor, our Boston store manager, said, yeah, go for it. And that's when the cycling community in general really got hold of it. And the support and response from the cycling community was nearly on the opposite end of positive overwhelming yeah. as his diagnosis. Yeah. It, Could you have imagined that? No, no. no. I mean... You, when you get a diagnosis like that, you feel very alone. Yeah. All of a sudden, it just feels like all the air has been sucked out of your lungs and you're grasping for anything you can do to get help from anyone. Yeah. Um, and it... It's just so unexpected. Um, I think when you get a diagnosis like a brain tumor, you've almost got two options. And I don't judge anyone that goes either way, but you can stay silent and secluded and sort of keep it to yourself. And that's how some people deal with things. But I think it was important to us to let this be known and advocate for him. And one of my biggest things is he he's not going to be able to fight this alone. He needs as much support as he can possibly get. And for a three-year-old, he's got a pretty big team. Yeah. It, <laughs> it's amazing how many people have reached out to him yeah. to help him and support him. And, you know, I usually internalize everything <laughs> and keep it to myself. <laughs> but I found it very cathartic yep. to talk to people and to write the post about him on the Facebook page and just... Be more vocal about it. it. It's really helped me get through it, you know, and not put the weight of the world on my shoulders and yep. eventually like fall a, down. It's almost like a form of therapy yeah. and also an awareness to let people know that yeah. this is how people live when they have cancer in the family and you get through it. It doesn't have to be like a such a bad thing. Um, there are ways to find positivity throughout this type of diagnosis and we found it in our community in the yeah. cycling community my work community friends in holliston and our family and, it's and strangers now yeah. who are friends and yeah you know car dealerships in vermont stepped in and helped out in a time of need too yeah. and it it's been unbelievable and i'm just really thankful there's that many people who want to see the best for him yeah because I really have a hard time thinking it has anything to do with me or her. <laughs> no, we but, really hey. do like you. Like, you're really great. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure that karma comes back around. And you've yeah. been good to very many people in your life. So yeah. Was the PMC a totally different experience for you this year? It really was. You know, I've been on the support side of it for so long and got to interface with the riders who do all the hard work and pedal the bikes and... You know, the general spirit of the event has always been uplifting and just a joyful experience that's built on so much sadness. Um, and I've always found it huge. And to be on the side of a spectator and to be at the PMC and not be integral in its function for the day, but now Declan's integral in the motivation of thousands of riders to keep pedaling mm -hmm. and to make it to the finish. It, it was awesome. And the event and the day and the pedal partner tent was just tremendous. He had a blast. We had a blast. Um, it was really, really cool. And it was nice to see, sort of meet all these people, these strangers who have become family, but we had not met yet. Yeah. Um, and even, you know, customers that I've had over the years who I've known well, the hugs were different. You know, the high fives and the hugs had a different feel to him and that was really really cool to experience learn a lot from him yeah. don't let things slow you down don't let bad news bad diagnoses slow you down in life 
enjoy every moment, enjoy every minute, and just go for it. Take notes. Yep. And He's constantly wants everyone to be happy. Yep. He will walk up to you and say, how are you feeling? And if you say anything other than happy, say, I want you to be happy. Yeah. So. And that's usually followed by a big, big hug. Yeah. As he says. I'm going to give you a great big hug. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's really just that positive outlook, yeah. you know, that he has. Yeah. And just the joy to wake up every day and get to be a kid. You yeah. know, and that's and that's huge. And he's been this positive from the beginning. Yeah. And when he was in the hospital at diagnosis, or um, no, right after brain surgery, every doctor that came in the room, he would greet by saying, can I tickle you? <laughs> That's just, yeah. you know. And he, he would take all the doctors. Yeah. They don't that's get just, that every day. No, no. <laughs> but that's just what he wanted to do. Yep. Um, but so. it's the little things like that. Like, don't be blinded by a diagnosis. It's it's bigger than that, and it can really bring positive things into your life. Not that I wish this upon anyone or would go back and want it again on myself. But if I were going to do it again, I would want this community and this set of people that are helping us because they have made a huge difference in our lives. Yeah. Work, Landry's, cycling community, everybody has made yeah. a huge difference yeah. in our lives. Family. It's, yeah. it's a community that turned into a huge village. Yes. Because community is a, is a great word, but village is more personal. Yeah. You know, and now it's... Now it's a village, I'm and do a puppet show. you're okay. going to do a puppet show. No, it's going to be a dinosaur puppet show. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And you got good news yesterday. Yes, we too? did. Um, you, you know, it was his. Yes. Okay. Okay. One second. <laughs> okay. One second. Um, yesterday was his first scan since this all started. And since we've been chasing seizures, my mind races and is it getting bigger? What's going on? I, you know, just the, and they call it scan anxiety. It's a legitimate thing. Scan anxiety. Yeah. It's, you're, you're freaking out about this scan and it, you know, it sort of threw me for a loop for a few weeks. I just couldn't really, you know, I could focus when it was busy. Yeah. When it got slow, you start to worry. Um, and your head starts playing games. And, but yesterday was awesome. We had a scan. We're waiting for the oncologist at Jimmy Fundana Farber. The door opens faster than it's ever opened, and the biggest smile on his face ever. And he goes, "It's all good news." Yes. Uh -huh. That it was very awesome yesterday. He yeah. Good and numbers. We, got to have chemo. And we found out that his tumor, if anything, has gotten a tiny bit smaller. Yeah. But it's not bigger. And the goal at the beginning was to maintain it. It's not to make it go away because it won't. It's never going to go away. It's something yeah. that he's going to have his whole forever. life. Yep. Um, and it will stop growing in his early 20s. But until then, it's keep it stable. So there is a possibility that he may need chemo every few years. Yep. Um, and, but with all of the research that's going on right now, no. I mean, soon he may be able to just have to take a break. Yeah. 